nousee tuon helmiöksen. Brown will try and chuck one more, but he can't, and the left hand lays him out! And, and another. Oh. On April 2nd, 2016, undefeated heavyweight Robert Hellenius faced former world title challenger Yohan Duapaz for the vacant WBC silver heavyweight title. Before the wait, Hellenius had been out of the ring for two years due to injuries and a dispute with his promoter. However, he made a comeback with three easy wins to improve his record to 22-0. Duapon, on the other hand, came into the fight with a professional record of 33 wins and three losses. His last loss was against Deontay Wilder for the WBC heavyweight title. Duopas was brought in as an underdog, but instead, he dominated. Hellenius utilized his size advantage and landed blows on Johan from a long range. Duopas defended with his body and tried to deliver his punches at close range. In round four, Duopas dropped Hellenius to the canvas with a big right hand before stopping him with another perfect combination to the head in round six. <laughs> Hellenius struggled to get back to his feet but stumbled into the ropes. After the loss, Hellenius won his next three matches to set up a fight against British boxer Dylan White. However, he lost via 12-round unanimous decision. In total, Hellenius has had four losses in his professional boxing career so far, with the last one coming against Deontay Wilder in October 2022. On September 10, 2016, Kel Brook challenged Gennady Golovkin for his WBC, IBF, and IBO middleweight titles. Brook turned pro in 2004 and quickly accumulated a professional record of 36-0, with 25 of them coming by way of knockout. He won the IBF welterweight title over Sean Porter in August 2014. However, after defending the IBF welterweight title three times, Brook decided to move up two weight divisions to challenge Golovkin. As an amateur, Golovkin won gold at the 2003 World Championship and silver at the 2004 Olympics. And at the time of fighting Brook, he held the WBA, WBC, IBF, and IBO middleweight titles, although the WBA refused to sanction the fight. Remember, protect yourself at all times, and you must obey my command at all times. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. Golovkin came out firing in the opening round, buckling Brooks' legs. But Brooks survived the opener and fired back in round two. We've seen Brooks box under pressure. He's now being very, very patient. He needs to be. Oh, oh watch out. Here comes that uppercut. And that's what it's from. Oh, no. that Electrifies the arena. Oh, oh not nicely here. This is really impressive stuff. From Over the next two rounds, Golovkin unloaded a barrage of powerful shots, but Brooks showed courage as he absorbed most of the onslaught. For this man, oh, he is up. There's blood coming from somewhere. I think it's the nose. Oh, Brooks digging in. No. Quiet. It doesn't seem to be. No, he can't. 
He's, he's advancing now, Golovkin, and he's looking to land these heavier shots. And Abel Sanchez was calling for him in the corner to start. In round five, two of the judges scored the fight evenly, while one judge had Brooke ahead by a point. But Golovkin continued to break down Brooke with his shots, leading to an injury in his right eye, forcing Brooke's corner to throw in the towel midway through the fifth round. Came out like a jab yeah. but you're quite right yeah. who went far different. He got the weight on his right leg when he threw that there. He's just got a feeling here now. Oh, he's that he's dismantling it on. him. He's yeah. pulling it on. Brooks in trouble. Brooks is in a lot of trouble. Oh, these are heavy shots as well. There's a towel neck. But where did that come from that time? Yeah. Dominic Ingo. Yeah, he said that's enough. Ah, it's over. He said it's enough. Can you believe it? Well, well, well. Gallant performance from Brooke, all the well, same. But he was unraveling fast. And I think Dominic Ingle has done the right thing. He saved his man. There's something not right. Gennady. Gennadyovich. Golovkin. Despite this, Brooke won many admirers for his spirited performance and stepping up two weight divisions to make the fight. After the loss, Brooke returned to welterweight to defend his IBF title against Errol Spence Jr. in May 2017, but he lost the fight. He won his next three fights to set up a fight against Terence Crawford for the WBO welterweight title in November 2020. But Crawford emerged victorious with a technical knockout in the fourth round. Kel Brook fought Amir Khan in February 2022 and retired shortly after the victory with a record of 40 wins and 3 losses. On January 11, 2016, Australian Lucas Brown challenged Englishman Dylan White for his WBC Silver heavyweight title. Brown started boxing at the late age of 30 and he came into the fight with a clean record of 25-0. White, on the other hand, was 29 years old and had a record of 22 wins and one loss from Anthony Joshua. He captured the previously vacant WBC Silver title from Robert Hellanius in October 2015. Clean and remember, defend yourselves at all times. Check hands. Dylan dominated the fight from the opening bell. Brown left himself open most of the time and tried switching stances after a few rounds. Brown suffered a cut over his left eye in round three, which got worse with each round. White then bloodied Brown's nose in round five. Is there a point? I'm not the most compassionate person, but I'm sending him up. However, in the sixth round, Dylan delighted the spectators with a brutal knockout. We'll try and chuck one more, but he can't, and the left hand lays him out. Dillian White is victorious, and it's a dramatic finish after a punch perfect display and our attention. Brown bounced back after the loss, stopping his next two opponents and winning the third straight fight via a unanimous decision. However, he suffered his second defeat against another Englishman, David Allen, in the third round of their bout in April 2019. He currently has a record of 31 wins and four losses, all coming by way of knockout. On April 8, 2011, undefeated David Lemieux squared off against Mexican veteran Marco Antonio Rubio in a WBC middleweight title eliminator. Lemieux came into the fight with a record of 25 wins, with 24 of them coming by way of knockout. While Rubio came into the fight with a record of 49 wins, with 43 of them coming by knockout, 5 defeats and 1 draw. Let's go, touch gloves. Midway into the opening round, Lemieux opened fire and rocked Rubio multiple times, but the Mexican veteran showed tremendous courage by refusing to go down.
Lemieux continued with the onslaught for the next four rounds, throwing every punch with bad intention, but Rubio continued to weather the assault. Then in round six, Rubio exploded and started landing hard shots of his own that slowed down Lemieux. In round seven, Rubio landed a big right hand that sent Lemieux to the canvas. Lemieux got up, but Rubio continued from where he left off, prompting Lemieux's corner to throw in the towel to stop the fight. David Lemieux a appris beaucoup de ce combat, tout comme son équipe, et bon, faut souligner. Lemieux also lost his next fight against Joaquim Alcide for the WBC International Middleweight title. Le he returned to winning ways after the second defeat, winning nine straight wins and claiming the vacant IBF middleweight title from Hassan Ndam and Khan in June 2015. The first defense of his IBF title, however, was a unification fight against Gennady Golovkin. He lost the title via an eighth round technical knockout. After picking up a few victories, Lemieux unsuccessfully challenged for the WBO middleweight title against Billy Joe Saunders in December 2017. Oh! His last fight was a third round loss against David Benavidez in May 2022, and he currently has a professional record of 43 wins and 5 losses. On August 24, 2019, British boxer Anthony Yard challenged Russian Sergei Kovalev for the WBO light heavyweight title. Yard got into boxing at a relatively late age, having only 12 amateur fights before turning pro in 2015. However, he quickly compiled a record of 18 wins and no losses, winning different regional titles along the way. While Kovalev had a record of 33 wins, 3 losses, and 1 draw. The action started very fast with both boxers looking to take the lead and land jabs. However, halfway through the fight, it was Kovalev that took the lead on all the scorecards. In round 8, Yard rocked the champion with a straight right to the head and followed up with a series of vicious power shots, but Kovalev managed to stay on his feet. And the right, he's got the champion going. Oh, tremendous attack! Big headshots from Yard! And Kovalev now will surely ride out the storm. But what a round for Yard! He's absolutely spent it. Kovalev came back in the ninth round with hard jams and continued until the tenth round. Oh, what a response. <laughs> Most at will. Good left from, from Kovalev. Again from the champion. 15 seconds to go, and it's all Kovalev. The referee's looking closely at this. Then, in round 11, Kovalev landed a huge left jab that sent Yard flat on his back. The left hand that did it, and the fight, I think, is all over there. It is over. The referee stopped it. Has won by knockout. 
massive effort from Anthony Yard, but in the end, the punch that has served 9, 10 and 11 at the age of 36, remarkable. Great effort from Yard, but Kovalev just knew too much. It, it, it was just experience and, and, and ability, let's be honest, because he, he boxed well beyond the jab, but what I would say about Anthony After the loss, Yard made a comeback by defeating his next two opponents. However, he lost his next fight to Lyndon Arthur for the Commonwealth and vacant WBO regional titles. Lyndon King in December 2021, Yard defeated Arthur in their rematch. And WBO On January 28, 2023, he fought against the undefeated champion Artur Beterbiev but lost by technical knockout in the eighth round. He currently has a record of 23 wins and 3 losses. Which of these fights is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more interesting updates. Thank you for watching.